Hey, Samir. Hey, Vani. Yeah, let's good wait morning. on a few others. Good morning to you as well. Yeah, good morning. I'll be back in one minute. I'll just get the pen from the other room. Uh, we are in the office today. Sure, so let sure. me go. Okay. okay. Hi, Samir. Hi, back. Hey, hey Nima. Hey, Pritesh. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Nima, did anybody talk to you about your availability for the migration to OCI artifact? Um, as in my capacity in general to work on OCI related. Yeah, things. yeah. I think uh, Niaz uh, was telling last in the last meeting that he might touch base with you. I'm not sure if anybody spoke to you about that. Do you um, have any availability to work on that? My aim is to put at, at least, uh, my aim is to put at least 50, 60% of my time onto ORAS, that's the aim. But that's been the aim since I joined, and it didn't hasn't happened that way. But yes. possibly okay. because um, you know urgent things came up that needed immediate attention. But I just okay. don't know how often we get urgent things that require immediate attention. But the aim is to be 50, 60 percent on RS. For me. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So uh, based on this, you will have some time to work yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. Samit Pratish, do you copy that? Yeah, yeah, understood. I think, uh, yeah, I think the Nima has to pick up the work that he can given his time constraints. Uh, so the, whatever work in the community that puts out and Nima can raise his hand for that. Right. Yeah, right, right now I've got like about three or four issues on GitHub that I think will be good for me as someone new to like knock them out and in the process learn more about how things work. Um, I'm also going to spend some time, yesterday I spoke with Michael and he introduced me to a couple of tools like Boca and distribution, things like that. So I'm going to set up like a sandbox so I can test out the, basically, if I try and sit down and read a spec, I just keep falling asleep because I just can't focus. But maybe if I set up this sandbox and then I can actually, you know, get my hands, you know, use, you know, <laughs> actually make, watch what happens and compare it to the spec and then that way I can get up to catch up to speed because I still feel kind of uh, you know like a huge noob <laughs> sure, thank you sure. hey I think we have David joined now uh, David some of us have a conflict uh, so we like to keep this meeting short as much short as possible uh, for today okay, uh, okay. I think uh, Vani you want to Take the lead and, fo and let us focus on the most important items first. Correct. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so if uh, let me share the agenda. Yeah. Should be uh, I think that would be good to just 
Can you see my screen? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So let us talk about alpha for release task list uh, because that is the immediate uh, uh, what we have to do. Um, okay. So, yeah. So the spec update was already completed, right, Pritesh? So we that was one of the open item in the last meeting. Yes, it's complete, and I think Roy replied that we are good with that. The PR needs to be approved and merged. Uh, right. Also, I have uh, raised the PR for implementation. Right, right. Uh, if you're, yeah. So the implementation uh, uh, changes as well, uh, kind of targeting around 922. Uh, Pritesh, anything to add on to that? Uh, I have PR uh, PR rates for that, so it depends on how frequently we can approve or provide feedback on PR. Okay. Yeah, for the certificate, the certificate chain. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, can you link to that, please? I'm, I'll make yeah. sure we we get on it ASAP. Uh, I will ping on uh, Notary V2 channel itself for both changes. Uh, I will update the Notary V2 channel with the PR. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So having said, uh, those are the two items uh, that was open based on our last meeting. And we have a couple of items where, uh, you know, we need to build notation Go and Core Go with the latest uh, Oras Go library changes that was done recently. And then we have mm -hmm. the release for Alpha 4. So... Yeah. This is just the tentative date I have put, but I just wanted to know uh, what uh, the team here thinks about it. Any thoughts around that? Yeah, I mean, it sounds good. Sounds good to me. Um, I think I think uh, just the in lack of uh, automated testing, uh, we might want to just allocate some time. To test things after we think we have the final bits there. Okay. Um, perhaps the let's see the dev the dev build we could use the dev build potentially for that. Um, yes. The only thing would would just be that. Well, yeah, we could use the dev the dev the weekly dev build for that. Um, and so that comes out. Is it is it months? I have to check which date that comes out. I forget off the top of my head. But if we would coordinate like whenever that dev build comes out, and then you know, give a little bit of time to test and then if it's all good, then we can, we can release, right? Sure, sure. Um, so alpha yeah. four is what we are going to call that release, right? No, after the dev build, basically. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. No, it's still going to be called alpha four. I just was saying we could use the dev build as a, as a way, to, easier way to test uh, alpha four, like before we officially release alpha four. Yeah, because it would it should be it should be I mean if we get everything in before the de the dev build then it should be basically the same the same thing. Okay, sure. Yeah, because uh, I think uh, Samir, based on your point last time, you we were debating on whether it should be alpha three patch or alpha four. So we are all good to call it alpha four. Sounds good. Yeah. 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 It's fine with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so when you just an action item, I'll take to create a new release note for alpha four. Okay, and sure. so that we have a release notes to go along with it. Sure, sure. Yeah, we never. Are. I don't think we, we you ever finished the PR for the alpha yeah. three. Yeah, I did yeah. not pull it because I said, hey, we are not officially released alpha three, but now let's just do that and just do this at the same time then. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Quick question. Yes. Uh, I just joined in. So, so we are saying mm -hmm. we'll do the automated weekly release and then do a manual release for alpha four correct yeah okay all right yeah, yeah yeah so yeah it looks like we have the dev builds going out on i think it looks like sunday so um if in terms of timing the alpha four release uh <clears throat> you have the dates 26. you have the dates of you have the dates of 23 and the dates of 26 so um i would say like if 25th. we want to use the if we want to use the dev build then we could use the dev the weekly dev build on the 25th as the mm -hmm. the test bits for
for what should be alpha four. And then um, we could, let's say, test it the day on Monday. And if that's, and there's no earth shattering, you know, things that are broken, then we can release that, that day. Perfect. Yeah. Milan Pratesh, Amir. Good. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So we are good with the first one, which was just the alpha release. Now RC one release task list. So the notation sign experience, uh, was there any, uh, this was, uh, these are the user stories that I actually extracted from the GitHub. So going through those uh, in order to see if there are any open items or we can, what what is that? If we are good, then uh, what are the next steps for that if there is anything to be discussed here? So notation sign experience. Yeah, one is I looked through these that you included. These are all the links to the user stories, right? Correct. Uh, and, Correct. And, and in the links to the user stories, we have the underlying actual implementation stories which have to be done. So okay. I think we just need to make sure those are assigned and people are working on them. That will be my, my way of monitoring it. So for the sign, that specific story, uh, he is already working on it. Um, he had asked some questions. We need to get back to those. Let's see. You can see here in this conversation. Let me stop sharing. Um, Yeah, I think it's a matter of everybody providing feedback. That is the same thing then. You, is that the trust store thing he was talking no, this, about? No, this is for sign. Oh. It's linked in the issue that you said. Uh, that sh there should be a PR. I think he is asking preliminary questions here. That's Is fine. The I think the, the, the we are uh, fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I pasted in chat. The next next steps are basically for you to continue to define this and for others to provide feedback. Uh, he has tagged me, Steve, and David in this conversation, but there's uh, pretty much everybody should provide feedback here. All of the CLI yep. effects. Yeah, and I think, so I think the big thing is just to get agreement on scope. I don't think we have to lock down on the sign experience right now. Um, and especially since you're trying to keep the, the meeting short today. Um, but yeah, yeah. We, ha we have that, yeah. <laughs> so, so if you all go through the agenda, is there anything that we need to talk? Because we are cutting like maybe another 10, 15 minutes is the meeting. If we really think what's the... What's the main agenda based on the release task list here? Well, yeah, I would just say, I mean, there's a ton of bullets here. Um, there was a separate hack and D doc that, that was there, um, but it looks like he, you know, he just pasted everything in directly, which is, it's fine. Um, so I, I think it's just, um, it'd be good to just get a rough feel of, is there anything in here that you think should not be an RC1 or something missing that you think should be an RC1. Um, to, to clarify, uh, Vani updated this, the agenda yeah. items. So, so yeah, uh, Vani. Yeah, okay. I have grouped into multiple sections so that, you know, the post RC1 okay. release, we can take it later. So it is not a priority for this meeting. So we can go through the RC1 release task list. And also there is a miscellaneous one that uh, I just wanted uh, the team here to take a look at it uh, because there was one outstanding item uh, in the notary, uh, uh, you know, in that channel. And uh, I don't see any reply to this. So is there anyone who can take this up on the miscellaneous uh, tasks 
the first bullet hyun uh, um, did ask for a i think that is uh, one is that a specific for... okay um <sighs> It, it, it sounds like there's a PR that's blocked there. I mean, yeah, and exactly. So I, I don't know which which one that is, but I mean, it it shouldn't be that hard to update the CI build to make sure it has the right Go version. Um, so I I would need more context on on which where the link is for where that's getting blocked. Sure, it it's on the Notary V2 channel. Oh. Okay. I think it's uh, it was requested on Tuesday. I don't see any traction after that, and looks like that's a blocker. Yeah. Mm, here's the message. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think okay. we should yeah. go through the rest. Uh, David, I'm not sure if he attended the was it Monday call or Tuesday call? Monday call. Yeah, unfortunately, I was I was out. Okay, so so I think what's required here is for everybody to just review how the RC one versus post RC one is divided into and agree upon. Money, exactly. I think you should also paste this in the community. Uh, oh, sorry. And, yeah. yeah, there. Yes, yeah, I'm a little confused because I, I do see some stuff is different. Because I, I, I know you had an actual hack MD doc that was just for the RC one past this, and it looked like this looks like almost the same. But I'm noticing things like pen test and some yeah, there's stuff something I don't remember yeah, in there. Yeah, I think we can paste it there, saying can this be yeah, uh, let me, into let the me, same hack doc? Let me do that. Yeah, there, there are a couple of newer items and uh, we, uh, David, to keep you up to date, we we talked about revocation and TSA with Shiva. Okay. Yep. So so we have the outcome there. We'll do the spec in RC1. It's it's under the post task list, post RC1 release. Okay. Uh, spec in RC1 implementation in RC2 and TSA support will be added post RC1. And then the trust policy, trust store, we already decided we'll uh, split. Trust store will go into RC1 and trust policy will be implemented in RC2. The okay. RC1 list, it's good for everybody to go through and uh, confirm what, like if, if there is any mismatch in expectation. Uh, so I think that there are a couple of spec items there is a notation default signature format, and there is the revocation spec. So the, there will be these two spec items to own. Uh, we also talked about OCI references. Um, I think this is really kind of time-based based on when OCI uh, gets officially, the references gets officially adopted. Uh, but we have still kept it in RC1. Uh, I want E to also confirm that there's no no issues with that. Other than that, um, going through the RC1 list, the, the second one, use extensible plugin to sign and verify. Um, you had created this one, David. So if we open that, we we currently have signing and verification through plugins. Uh, Alpha 4 will have the verify implementation too. Then it's linked with update notation plugin command for RC1. Um, plugin add. There are two two items there, uh, Melinda, 241 and 230. <clears throat> if you go to the next uh, bullet, right, it has those uh, links in there. Yeah, so I think these were, I think these were just kind of uh, like placeholders, you know, for RC1. I don't, it was really, we didn't dig in deeper to, to yeah. what, what, what work there was to be done. Um, 
So, yeah, I think we have some disagreement here. Let's see, create plugin add to place plugin in proper directory. Uh, maybe a post RC1 discussion. Um, the way the way currently plugin install works is two steps. You need to place the plugin in the proper directory. And you need to create an association between a key and a plugin in the yep. signing keys JSON. Yep. So, so I think maybe some clarity on if this will just install it in the proper directory. I see that there's details there looking at it. Uh, so the one, the 241 is plugin list and then the sign verify. Doesn't look like we're talking about plugin add. Um, but no, um, no, I'm looking at the in uh, 193 and 163, the tasks created for it, the issues created for it, they have details. I think adding a plugin makes more sense if you have managed the registry of plugins. Like if we don't, if we don't have a managed registry of plugins, then we can just we can, then we can. Offload this responsibility to plugin owners how they want users to install their plugin for like RC1. Yeah, I think post RC1, we can talk more about uh, how to, you could, yeah, you could do plugin add and do both these steps, install it in directory. And yeah, it's, it's, this is a one time step. Uh, and this command would make it easier to do. Yep. Uh, key creation, I think we have debated this. We, I don't think we are fully in agreement for allowing key creation. We, we should continue discussing about it. I think the from a getting started perspective, it it makes sense, but that is not the kind of the primary use case, the getting started or the kind of the demo use case. You usually have a different role which creates the key separately and then gives access to specific roles like like a build server or a set of developers or publishers. So, okay. yeah, I think we should debate more about this. But all of these seem like post RC one. Yeah, I think the yeah the key creation <clears throat> plugin spec I don't I don't think is a critical for RC one. Um, I, I definitely that's I don't think that's essential. Um, the the plugin functioning with like. With the ad, I think that's kind of a, that is a, I'd, I'd say that's more of a fundamental type of type of thing other than somebody having to copy a file to a directory. That's pretty bad experience in my opinion. Um, the key creation though is like I said, that's that's a bonus like kind of thing, a nice, a nice thing that we could do. Um, I don't know how much work the plugin ad would take, but um, yeah. I, I think we That's... could pull it in in about a week or so. Based okay. on the review cycles, it might be a week and a half. Okay. Um, okay. Actually, I I think even the smaller. Sorry, I, I'll, I'll I'll correct myself. I think even the smaller commands, we we should take minimum two weeks. Uh, that is with with focused effort on it. You'll have to do a basic some CLI spec for that. Don't have to go through the whole process. I think even a draft for something as simple for this hack MD, et cetera, just to get consensus is good before implementing it. So I think two weeks end to end to add, add this command. Sorry, which command we are talking about? Plugin add. Plugin. Uh, it would take more than two weeks because we have to define. Now you, 
I mean, there's much more than just writing a command for it. You need to know how to where plugin is located, how plugin works. Is there any pre configuration in the plugin itself, which plugin owners expect users to run and things like that? I don't think we'll take in scope any configuration. Yeah, that is what I'm thinking. It's, it might be more <clears> than <throat> that. The work we are scoping out might be more than two. It's, uh, I'm, it I'm looking the... at basically putting the binaries, putting the executables in the correct directory based on the plugin name and possibly adding a key, optionally adding a key in the signing keys. That should be the scope. I think anything more than that is very provider specific. Yeah. You cannot have those in implementation, like go and configure some environment variables or credentials or create some resources. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying. Like it, it would be yeah, a I'm, 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 story. I don't think so. I'm, uh, I think I'm, I'm on the same page with Melinda. It's like you just the main thing is once the, the plugin's installed, you just want the core provider to, to help with that so you're not messing around with the directory structure stuff. Um, and then after that, it's all on the plugin and I think all the other elements. How strongly do you feel about this one, David? This will add another little, like all of these features, even the smaller ones, will keep on pushing the rate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know that already we had feedback. I mean, we had pretty limited amounts of feedback uh, of, of what we've done so far, but that was one of the things that came up. Um, like where do I put this directory and people were okay. confused of where to put it. So I, I think it's just doing the bare minimum of getting the plugin to add to the right directory is like, I, I think that's a pretty important thing, but I, I agree. I don't want it to be every, all kinds of other use cases, just add the plugin where it needs to go. Is the is the details uh, what whatever was discussed right the requirement itself based on the scope is it part of any story out there? So 190, 193 has some details. One ninety three is it? Oh yeah. okay. okay okay. Yeah, because you because you basically would have to go to a spec document mm -hmm. to try and understand where to copy and paste the, the plugin, and then that will vary based on a number of different factors, like what operating system you're using. There's a, the, <laughs> it's not, it's not a, it's not a super simple thing um, necessarily to, to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that part makes sense based on the directory structure spec and based on the OS, et cetera, the paths are different. Yeah. I think we so can pull this in into RC1 as a lower priority. If like we are really up against the wall, then probably we'll drop yeah. this. But I I yeah. I agree it's con convoluted for users to figure this out. Yeah. So in this okay. RC, for, for RC1, you want to consider we're only talking about copying the directory from one place to notation. Yeah. Directory. Yeah. Okay. I think adding a key would optionally creating a signing key and associating with the plugin would be a bonus, but I mm -hmm. think the core functionality is copying over. Okay. Right. Yeah, the key key creation, I think that's fair to leave out of scope for RC1. I don't know if we want to put right. that in there or whatever, but but that, yeah, it's just the plugin, I think is a basic. Um, okay, that you, sounds you good. Stuck on. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so the one other suggestion that, uh, that uh, ye had that I, I want to bring up is the re enable timestamping for signing and verification, suggesting moving that uh, to RC2. Yeah, is we that... covered that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That? Okay. So okay. you see, so that's post clear. RC1, okay. we confirmed with Shiva okay. that the okay. DSS support that's can fine. be moved. Okay, good. Okay. Um... I think gated release process, you had some ideas, but this is a longer poll. I think as long as we can track it and figure out, we should create an issue. Do we have an yeah, issue? I don't think we do. No. Okay. I think if we have um, an issue and track it for RC1, that, that would be great. Okay. Yep. 
I can uh, I can create the issue. I'll take the action on that. Um, David, I think uh, when with this gated uh, topic, right? Release processing. I think yeah. uh, I and Samir. I think Samir initiated that discussion. We were uh, requesting for a document with that process. Yeah. So I think that. Uh, um, so, so I think that so there's two different processes, right? And that's what he was saying. The process today for releasing the the Go libraries are it's just literally like point and click, uh, and it actually auto generates the release notes for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, however, the, the the with the desire uh, to have a gated release, that means that we no longer uh, would use that manual process anymore because we would need Correct. um some some actual github action to do that um for the notation one i think that should be fairly straightforward because that's how we already do it we would just need to put an approval gate in there um Correct. but for yeah. but for the 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 libraries we would basically need to, to use um like a, a releaser and i and i was looking at this before there are there are things that do the release. Um, you just bring in the only downside is you bring in dependencies of that thing to do the release for you. But it's I mean it's a trade off, right? Um, so. Sure. Yeah. The dependencies. Um, what do you mean by dependencies? Well, like the you let's say you use a GitHub action that hasn't been updated in six months and. It, uh, uh, okay. it, the GitHub action has vulnerabilities and the GitHub actions now accessing your code and your release and whatever. Okay. I mean, it, that's all, it. Um, okay. you know, that's why. Yep. <laughs> hey, I have a question there. Uh, maybe David, for you and Milan, your input as well. We, notation will is, is used by people who want to experience the CLI experience to sign and verify and do things, right? But can people directly take dependency on notation go and not even use notation to do their yeah. Uh, yeah. In fact, in fact, that's what um the ratify dev team is doing. And they just filed an issue yesterday uh on some requests to make things easier. But yeah, actually, we also know I also know at least one other team inside Microsoft that's using the the library directly. Well, if that is the case, then uh from a breaking perspective. Uh, a, if notation go goes doesn't go through all the checks and balances we make notation CLI go. What are the what is the difference in the risks there? Is what I'm trying to see. If you want to have a gated process for notation, why not for notation go from a risk perspective? What's different between the two releases? Uh, I mean the 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 end to end tests that we're trying to set up for not notation CLI should test at least a subset of the 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 API, the APIs, right? The libraries. Um, we have the unit test, which also is, I'd say, more important for the APIs um, because that's kind of at the more closer to the level that it operates. Um, but it's it's really, I would not say it's important to have in scope for at least RC1 to have, you know, API end-to-end -end type tests on the APIs directly. I think we, we've talked about this a number of times. Um, because ultimately, we can't predict every single way which people may be consuming the API. Um, that's, yeah, that that's is really, correct. Uh, yeah, I think you're you're talking from a testing perspective, but I think yes, that's from right. a from a gated release perspective, I think all three are in scope, uh, as in the notation, CLI, and the libraries, because the core functionality is implemented in the in the libraries. And we have consumers of the library, like like you pointed out, which which is actually the intent of separating the libraries. Because people can directly take a dependency on it. Yeah, that's right. So, what's your? So, I mean, does that answer your question? Um, yeah, it does. I think it yeah. also clarified my request that we have a gated release where maintainers sign off on any formal release, like an alpha release on an RC one or RC two 
we have at least two maintainers sign off with the release notes in front of them, with the intentions in front of them. So it will allow us to have checks and balances saying yes. any for not the weekly bills, so I'm talking about the release release. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just let me uh where should I create that? Do you want to put it in notary? Should I put that issue in notary project because it kind of ties to multiple repos for the release, gated release? I think we can keep it in notation. Uh, well, that's a good point. I think uh, we can keep it in notation. Uh, yeah. Notary project, we are, I mean, it's been a mixed bag, but mainly trying to have spec related items in there. I think notation is the good place. We have some items. Well, about... Yeah, the notation though, I mean, the, the I would say the release process is a little easier to ration there. Um, the, the libraries is where it's a little harder and where I think there's a little more dialogue um, in terms of the gated process. Um, but yeah, so, so, like, I, so, so so notation go would be my preference if I had to pick because notation itself is as a CLI is I'd say easier because we already use GitHub Actions to do the actual release. It's fine. I think as long as the, the scope for this overall item is CLI and the libraries have a gated release yeah. process. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, uh, support cozy as signing envelopes. Is the question there? Is this confirmed? Uh, I would say yes. I, 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 we, yeah, that, that work is ongoing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, we just need people to review and hopefully merge stuff. And then obviously if there's address or any feedback, we can address it. But I mean, I, as far as I know, I mean, they're, they're kind of done unless there's any requested fixes with that implementation. I know that the spec yeah. we have to, the spec is still in draft, which I, I'm hoping the uh, by tomorrow, we can put that out of draft and into review. I mean, the, there's just a couple minor tweaks um, that we need to make, but it that should be pretty much ready as well. Okay, I had a, um, again this came randomly because I I wasn't watching the cozy spec updates, but there there was one from you, David, where I think you changed. In the cozy branch, expiry was critical, and you removed the critical. Yeah, I I removed it because I I didn't want to like delay where we're at right now. Um, I want to just kind of get the work that we have going um, and merged. I, but uh, yeah, I think part of the part of the bigger the bigger challenge that I'm seeing um, as I as I kind of try and project out where at least I see us heading is the general challenge of how do we, uh, whether it's JWS or COSY encoding format, how, how do we iterate upon any incremental changes that may need to take place to the, the format, right? Um, how do we, and, and, that, and that, because today there's, there's, as far as I can see, there's not really necessarily a, a way uh, to, to do that. No, I'll, I'll I'll clarify what I what my concerns were. So, the we we define an abstract signature format, and it lays out what are the properties, what are the signed attributes, whether they are critical or not, whether they are required or optional. The yep. JWS and Cozy are implementations of that abstract format, and the implementations cannot have any variation. Right. The, the the base spec says that these are particular attributes. Those exact same need to be supported in whichever serialization and representation format JWS and COSI support. So we cannot change the criticality of it. It, it is an optional field which is critical, the expiry. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's a little a little jarring in my mind. Is like, well, it's optional, but it's critical. And by definition, so, you're saying critical must be processed. Yep. Yeah, so what what it what it means is hang on, so hang I, on a second. Hang on a second. So there's an open discussion of how to represent 
profiles for COSY that we're trying to work through with the IETF. Yeah. And for one profile, something can be critical and another profile, it, it doesn't, it isn't appropriate or it's optional. And I think that's how we're gonna basically break the back on here saying, hey, you know, in certain scenarios, a, a secure timestamp is critical for, maybe critical for expiry, but in a skip world, that's not necessarily the case. And I think that's how we're gonna skirt this issue is by defining what profiles we support for, for notary, period. Right. And that gives us some flexibility to, to change and add new ones as we go forward. Right. Now, how to project that back to JWT, that's where I'm gonna yeah. need Melinda's help. Right. I right. We well, so talk. I don't, I don't, yeah, and I don't think we necessarily need to project stuff backwards, but I, I think that the there's there's two fundamental things that we need, um, and we are just just to illustrate how this is already in its current state is you already have two profiles signing signing profiles, right? Um, uh, you no, have the timestamp, you have the timestamp authority one, which has it changes the things that you need, right? right? That's and a, then you, that we we're calling it signing scheme. Signing scheme, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so the signing scheme, I, I view that as effectively a, a profile, right? Um, it's called signing scheme. One of the suggestions that we had, which I, we haven't formally proposed, um, is calling it a profile. But whatever. Uh, the, the, the bottom, the bottom line is that that it, today is a way in which that's that signing scheme is a way in which you decide what is required and what's not, right? And so as so we, I, as we, as we go, you know, and as we go to implement COSY, at least in its current iteration, we're effectively, as it stands, just adopting almost everything that is there for the JWS spec. And we're not even it's having a different the, signing. Um, we're, not, we're not having a different signing scheme uh, per se of, of what this, this specification is. I, I believe that should be different um, to have the most flexibility, which is, which is to Roy's point is that, you know, we should have uh, a profile effectively, or you call it signing scheme or whatever, that then defines, you know, whether you're using Cody or J Cozy or JWS or some other version, the way to define what is required and what's not for that particular no, that's, implementation. That, I, that, there is some, um, uh, there's a misunderstanding here. Uh, first, of, first of all, like the Cozy envelope should not, when you say, it's implementing similar to JWS or is it's it's not connected to JWS at all. Cozy envelope should just look at the base signature envelope. We we have a notary signature envelope spec, right? Just the signature right. spec. Yeah. Notary did that, I... yeah, that that should just drive everything else. Let me pull up the link for it. Give me just yeah, but I mean, JWS fundamentally does have, I mean, does have differences obviously than COSY. So um, the differences even... are in representation. Uh, and we, okay. we'll talk, there, there are multiple layers here. Let, uh, let me, so let me cover a bit. What Melinda is saying is basically you have a signature scheme, you can have implementation of that signature scheme or signing scheme in both JWS and COSY. If you bring, if we bring up a new signing scheme, then we can implement again in both JWS and COSY. So, yeah. So I, I, I shared the link, right? This, this signature spec, which doesn't talk about JWS or COSY, right? The, this is an abstract one, is all that is required to drive the COSY spec. I think we are talking about criticality for optional fields and how to... Yeah if that is supported and how to implement that in COSI, we should have a discussion for that. The, when you said profiles or signing scheme, right? We are currently defining two signing schemes, notary X509 and X509 signing authority. There's a bunch of, there's a totally separate document for signing scheme, which defines what is a signing scheme and what things it influences. Signing scheme is the top level branching of different signature types and the signature types is not linked to JWS or COSY. It's, it's the fundamental abstract types and what set of properties it can have. What, what it means is you cannot have a JWS or COSY specific uh, 
signing scheme. Unless there is a very strong reason, we'll have to discuss the the. Well, no, no, is... So no, no, just hang on. So the thing I'm trying to get at, Melinda, here is that if the epoch stuff comes in through CBOR, we may say, hey, that's how you encode timestamps, not. That's a representation, right? That's a representation. Correct. That's and, and that basically is the profile says, here's the field and what the data type is of the field. And that isn't necessarily gonna be um, instantly transferable between both protocols or both serialization formats. And I think that's, I wanna make sure we, we don't say, hey, if it doesn't work for one, it doesn't work for the other. I think that's why we want profiles to say, hey, in this, this format, this is the profile definition and in this, format here's the other one i'm not saying we try to describe to to limit one of the others but so the signing yeah. scheme doesn't dictate anything about serialization you can do right but it, but it does say what fields are mandatory and what the types yeah. are yeah it does yes and and the that's types, why uh, I'm calling this. the types actually let's look at that we don't even call the types here right the type, for example, the expiry and signing time, the specific type to use is up to the concrete envelope type to define. So, for example, yes, here it think, says. But right now, there is only one form of, of secure timestamp serialization. As soon as Epoch comes along, we'll have two. That makes this a little bit more interesting conversation. We should talk about these differences because, like, uh, what I'm saying is, wherever there are these action points, uh, let's talk about because if, if we if we talk about it at the point of merging the spec, that will just delay the whole thing because we'll end up talking. Yeah, about I'm not. Point. I'm not not saying that. I'm saying it's worthwhile and using cozy profile definitions is a way for us to unblock and allow future changes. Hey, we support this profile plus that profile, but things now become critical headers with or or additional headers that we have to support as a way to specify our progression forward in time. Is the profile a cozy concept? It, it it's one that has been proposed, and I've been meeting with Karsten Borman, who owns and drives most of the cozy work, and Hank tomorrow. Um, I can add you to that invite list and discussions because he, he's going, this is a bigger deal, might be an important concept to add in. And that way we allow us to say definitively, here's the three profiles that, that Notary supports you know, as we go forward. What is the... I think we support one right now, or two right now. We right? support two right now. Two. But the, two, yeah. the two is not limited. I think what I what I want to conveys the the signing scheme is not limited to serialization just serialization the signing scheme controls Agreed. right it controls other aspects of signing and verification like which trust store to select etc so yeah i agreed 100 percent, which is why i want to gain us some flexibility by by gaining this out instead of saying hey if these three headers are, are there it means this profile versus and, and formalize how we represent the difference. Let's talk about it more because the creation of a new signing pro, signing scheme is a separate discussion in itself in terms of what is its motivations and how does it work into it. I, I don't vision this as doing that. This is just a formalization of how do we indicate in COSI or CBOR what the profile is. It's more of a definition requirement. Instead of what we have today is the absence or the inclusion of, of headers dictates one format of another. It's just- uh, No, 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 it doesn't. The, we, we have the signing scheme also as a header, right? So the what you're calling as profile, the signing yeah. scheme is the is the parameter that is dictating the rest of the schema. Correct, but we haven't got the industry to agree to that. So we could do the, hey, Microsoft and AWS have, have pushed this forward and that's the way it's gonna be. Um, I think we should give the ITF a chance to say, hey, we would rather you do it this way and get their their input. But I, I agree with what you, you stated here, Mon. All right. I, so, I get what yeah. you're saying. The, the 
standardization may be a longer poll if it can be a shorter if we can conclude on that and get some suggestions that yep. sounds great all right yep that's what we were basically and that's why david i think you mark this as not critical but uh it is yeah. super important well, for us to get solved real quick okay yeah but, yeah i just yeah i i put it in there and i boxed it out because i just didn't want to delay anything um i just it, it does it just it is one thing that sits very odd to me that we would have a critical header that's optional. No, um, those, a, two, those, two, a, those two things don't really go together in my mind at all. No, no I, I can explain it. There's, and this has come up in different reviews. There, it, it is a very logical thing to do. What, what, what it means is that some attributes may or may not be present. So it is optional. But when, when it is present, it needs to be honored. You have the same thing in, for example, EKU certificate, right? We talked about basic, uh, I forget the terminology, basic attributes, key usages. Those are optional. Some of those are optional in some context. But if they are present, they need to be processed. They need to be understood and honored. So it is the same concept here. So expiry okay. in this scenario, gotcha. we say this is like best use best date to use by for an artifact. It is a yeah. feature that is not mandatory, but if customer wants to use it and there is a value in that field, then the verifier needs to honor it in verification. That's what it means. Gotcha. All right. Um, I think that was about it. I don't have any other contentional I think we covered everything else. Pen test, uh, we can discuss separately. Uh, it's under the RC1 list. I think we'll need Steve for that discussion. And then yeah. OCI, we should. Why, why did we think that was an RC1 thing? I mean, I like for pen testing? Um, if we say this is a release candidate and which translates to people can use it in production for a set of scenarios. We haven't enabled all these scenarios, but you can use for these core scenarios in production that that then we should have pen test there. Hmm. And okay. I think we, we got good value out of the pen test that was done for Cozy, right? At least it's like me look at, looking at it externally, just the report, et cetera, there, there were, there were a good amount of findings and improvements done based on it. So you're saying for the for JWS implementation then? This would be for, uh, there's different levels here again. Uh, we use Golang JWT, similar to GoCozy, that is the underlying library. Cool. Then in notation core Go, we implement the notation envelope using either JWS or COSI. So there's a bunch of code there. And we have a bunch of X509 certificate chain validation logic. So that is what needs to be reviewed, tested. And then in notation Go, there is trust or trust policy plugin, which are like, basically I'm saying all of these libraries have different aspects which need to go through pen test. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't. Um, I I feel like a post RC one is is okay to initiate those things. I mean, I don't I don't know who's who's going to start using it in production and and then complain that there's a vulnerability. Um, I I think if we're we're at one dot I think they could do that. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know if 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 we need to state that we're going to do more pin testing after RC1 or what, but I I don't know where we would set that expectation or someone. Yeah, would, I just want to bring up this topic. Let's go on. It would, it would be really a bread press if you want to release say that it's a security product and there's a vulnerability in it. Yeah. The problem. I mean, we, the yeah. only thing which is guarantees is security. And even if we cannot do it, then it's a problem with the product. Right, let's have a larger, matter. yeah, I think we we'll need more people to discuss for okay. this specific one. So Melinda, I did have one I wanted to cover off with you. Yeah, sure. 
that is, um, I'm starting to see people going into to building tools and, and technology based on what we've done with Go. Um, we've got .NET coming up for Cozy and Seaboard. Um, and we're kind of seeing people shy away from Rust and C++ because we don't have some of the same libraries embedded to the same level. Are you guys seeing the same thing from your side? Um, I sorry, I didn't I didn't understand the question. So you're talking so about Go Go Cozy. We're seeing people use Go to build new new technology or tools uh, because it's the one we've got vetted libraries and, and reviews on. Uh, we don't have the same thing for C plus plus and Rust. You so mean therefore... for you mean for tools for container use cases? Correct. Okay. I um, unfortunately I, I I don't have visibility because I'm like I'm from the crypto group in well even taking it past containers then go to to because we've got this work going for Go. Do we, people are gravitating to go instead of other languages because we don't have the libraries? And if so, which languages do we want to go in what order to try and increase the community um, accessibility is really where I was asking okay. the question. Got it. Okay. Um, I, 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 don't do expect, I don't expect I don't expect an answer now. I just yeah. like, like to hear your guys' feedback to saying, hey, in order of preference, we would like to light up a, a, B, C. Got it. I think we might have some feedback there, but not across all languages. I'll I'll get back on that one. Yeah, appreciate it. That that'll help as input for us. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, folks. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.